that. Sure. Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and uh, I have two very, very special guests here. Uh, we have uh, we have Sean and we have Blaine from Ace Mind. And the reason why I do this for you guys is, as always, the reason I started doing content is people were just asking me, what do I do? Like, how do I play? What tools do I use? And whenever I use something, I always share it with everybody. And, and you know, just a little bit of, of background I mean, I personally use Ace Mind. I found it myself. I pay for it myself. I have no revenue share with these guys. I've just literally nothing, nothing to these guys. There's no back and forth between us as far as they're getting anything from this. It's just literally something that I use myself in addition to a lot of other things that I use. So I, I try to get the people that are involved in this kind of on to kind of like watch me kind of fumble through it and 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 learn how to use this thing and get a little background and and uh, I figured I would just share my screen and just start firing this stuff up. But why don't you or either Blaine or Sean, either of you, whoever is more suited, just give me a quick summary, I guess, of, of where you guys started and why you started this in the first place. Yeah. So, I mean, I can I can touch on that. We started uh, a few years ago. But I don't know how many years at this point, but years ago, I was in college. Uh, I was it a was, uh, college student. And it was like uh, COVID, right? Yeah, around COVID, no, even like my senior year of college or whatever. Yeah. I was a broke college yeah. student and I love playing DFS, uh, but I couldn't afford Fantasy Cruncher. Um, and I went to school for software engineering. So obviously I knew how to program and I've been programming for a while at that point. So I decided, why not build my own optimizer that I can use? And I shared it as a public tool, uh, sort of gained traction. I met up with Blaine around that time, who's much better at like the data science side of things. He's very in tune with the simulation side of things. And we sort of paired together and worked on these tools publicly for a long time. And they've always been sort of difficult to use in the command line. You kind of have to have a know-how of a, a general know-how of like Python and, and JSON and other things to set up the, the local environment and run it yourself. So we decided why not turn it into a, an easy to use website that other people can use. And yeah, we sort of just went from there. Lane, are you a cyclone as well? Or uh, where, where'd you go to college? I'm a beaver. Went to Oregon State. Nice. Very, very nice. And I, I'll ask uh, both of you the same thing. You know, do you guys, you guys play? I mean, do you guys play DFS yeah. a lot? Uh, you're like active players as well? Yeah. I've yeah. Played DFS a long time. Yeah. You know, it's because it's, um, as, as you'll learn, it, it's very difficult to do both uh, <laughs> and do it well. Uh, content and playing. Uh, something, something has to give uh, some degree. But one thing that, I'll share with you guys is I don't know if you guys know me back from the poker days or whatever, but back, back in the poker days, I was in, I was involved in creating probably the first content site for poker, like poker training site. Back in the day. And my partner and I, Blaine, you got day, some noise going on, I believe. There my partner go. and I struggled over whether we wanted to do it in the first place. Like why, why teach people how to play? Why give up our edge? And back then there was a huge edge. But I convinced him to do it for a number of reasons. Number one is we probably make you know a good amount of money doing it, obviously. And secondly, what what we found is the actual act of teaching people and reducing everything to kind of like the bare minimum and really figuring out how it all worked actually made us better, like as players, you know. Um, so that's you could you could you could you could sacrifice a little bit of your play to do content, but you have to, I think that doing the content is going to probably help you guys as well. And even like, so if I can imagine when you guys kind of like try to troubleshoot, like even the optimizer or the, or the Sims, you're like, well, this is so strange. Well, I'm really getting 99% of the, you know, the stack against the most popular pitcher. Is that, is that, is that really the way I'm supposed to be playing, you know, or, or, or something like that. So uh, I obviously wish you guys both a lot of luck. It's a tough space. You know, a lot of people are doing it, but Listen, I mean, you got you got to do it because it's intellectually stimulating and because you want to, you know, if you did this, if you did contents specifically just to make money, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of a rough go, uh, to say the least. So when I found these guys, OK, um, I mean, listen, I'm I'm addicted to learning. You know, I, I, I have a you know, I run a hedge fund full time and that's how I went. I got a DFS because it's really a portfolio management problem, you know, DFS, you know, and and. and when st people started coming out with simulations and contest sims and things like that, this was very, very interesting to me. So I'm always looking around for new 
and you know new and different ways to kind of approach this and that's how i got turned on to your site i, th I think i must have you googled it or maybe i saw you guys tweet about it or something i don't even remember and it's funny i was telling uh sean that you know i i asked him how long you guys were doing this because i signed up about you know midway through the nfl season and he's like well that's basically when we got started I'm like really like usually when i find out about something it's usually like a year after it starts so but but uh so i'm kind of like uh feel like i'm one of the first first people to kind of get in there and just you know, a little couple a couple of screenshots where I've, I've actually used their tools very successfully specifically in golf showdown um and we're going to get into why um i like you guys in general and why you know there's why golf showdown i i, I use you guys specifically for um so let's let's kind of get started but but i it's so funny but i don't even know half the things that are going on there's i only use it for the simulator so I didn't even realize that there was kind of an optimizer in here, but let's 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 start by just kind of just just doing it now. First of all, um, you guys, as you guys already know, you know, like I'm, I'm I know Andy from Saberson back in the day. We're not like doing a comparison. We're not like I'm not trashing anybody or whatever. I even I even texted uh, Andy, but just so you know, I'm doing a review of their stuff. You know, it just if you don't like it, too bad. You know, um, yeah. so here it it starts off, and you get to pick you know, all your different things. This is like the, what I, what I do. Right. And here are some of the problems maybe you run into. So I will just click on PGA and it'll give you the kind of the choice. And sometimes they're a little slow getting things up there. Sometimes the showdown slate doesn't populate till like overnight or something like that. And you get to pick whatever and you pick your contest names and let's, let's build it for, for the lottery. And then we hit just cre create simulation job. Now this is where you get to import your own, stuff which is why i signed up for you guys i mean i don't i don't need more projections i don't need more whatever i have plenty and whatever now it says here that you can add two files and map the data your columns we auto detect popular files from etr stochastic and some others i personally have my own template um which i use to upload and i i figured out what you guys needed to uh to do it um and so i just up upload it from here and then we just hit import one file uh oop, now here is there's not in this draft group or do, 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 let's just see it's interesting this is probably something i did wrong let's try again let's go uh classic 3 a.m let's do again Oh, because I tried to the you uploaded this okay. MLB sim or okay. something. MLB is are, are usually not very, very good golfers. So actually some <laughs> all right. So we import file right here. And now this is what's interesting. So this is the thing that comes up right away. So it's got the players, it's got the projection, and it it shows you where it's mapping from. So projection is mapping from FPTS. Now, if there's something error in your template, it'll 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 yell at you, right? And then ownership, I, I have it right. Standard deviation, I have my own column for standard deviation. And if you don't have the column, it could prompt you to ignore or or whatever. Make cut percentage, which it's all going to be one for this tournament. Then win probability. I happen to have all that in the in this file. And then you have this thing that says field points. Um, now, it always says no field points column detected. Now, what I'm presuming this is supposed to do is you have to tell it what projection or whatever to presume for all these players when you're going to run the fields, the fields to compare yourself to. Now, I can't think of anything else than to just put use projection value. Is there anything yep. else to do except for that? You can. So, for example, let's say you are sourcing your data from a different site and you have your own projection model. You can upload your uh, your personal projection to the projection column, which will be used in the player sims, like in the actual out the contest outcomes. And then the field points gets used in the lineup generation for the field. So it's like you can you can use like an aggregate of of uh, ETR and stochastic, for example. Well, well, and well. Use that as your field points. To, let's go back to it. I already do have like custom projections that are that are that are being used. Like here's like, I'll show you. Like this is like the raw file. I'll, I'll show you. This. Yeah. So for example, if you're if you're higher this week on you know on Shuffler than you think the field will be, you would upload maybe like 94 points for Shuffler in your fantasy points column then you'll set the field to whatever you think the field is projecting Scotty to be. Oh, I see. Okay. So uh, that's the difference, right? So I'm, I'm putting my own projections in here, but if I want to right, so if I want to just say, okay, the, the industry is going to be a little different then I have a separate column. For, 
Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Scotty's probably not a great example this week, but you know, I don't know somebody like John Rom. If you're higher on Rom this week or something, then you think the field will be you can yep. you can differentiate yourself there. So let's uh, so we'll put that in, and then we just import the player data, and it kind of just does its thing. And then here's kind of a table where it lists all the players. Now, one thing that you'll notice, by the way, and here's a little thing: there's there's somebody who is notably absent from this list, and um, I was wondering what what it, why that was, and he's in my my files as well, and that is CT Pan for some reason. So CT Pan is not showing up in this list, even though he's on the raw, um, uh, the raw thing. I don't know whether it's because of the, um, what you call it, the, uh, the, the, the dot in his name, maybe. Yeah, let me check our template. He either he might not have been in the draft group, or there's a name mismatch. I'm yeah, guessing it's a name thing, and and. Let me just uh, let me go. Yeah, back. we have him as C dot T dot Pan. Right. So what I ended up doing last time this happened, and I, I wanted to reproduce it here live, is uh, is I just went in manually and just entered um, the data for his column. Like you'll see that I'll show you. I mean, I can find him. Yeah, and then one thing I noticed too on your um, on that player view screen is your percentages, um, the way we're parsing them out is is probably different than you have them formatted in your sheet because we had when we were displaying them it showed make cut percentage as one percent and then your win percentage also looked like percent. they were okay yeah it also looked like they were shifted two decimals over so that might be okay so i, I that's that's on my end then so i gotta i gotta fix it. okay so like over here right so here's before i think there was a ct pan it's on yeah so ct pan here is unchecked mm -hmm. Because I guess you have them at point at, at, at the decimals and whatever. So here, what I would do is I would just, I mean, I could change my, I could change him, obviously. Yeah. But Either you change thing. him on the import or you could edit the values here. And you can do that with any player here as well if you want to. Yeah. So let's, uh, so let's actually do that. Let's, um, let's not use the baseball again. Let's, um, where did I go? Um, okay. So for CT Pan, which who I'm ending up with like 65% of right now, um, that would be, uh, so I would have him. So we can just change this right here. So we're going to change him to what I had was 58. And what is this? The ownership of those standard deviation. So standard deviation, I had him at 14.5. And then for ownership, I had him at uh, 11.9. Oh, so oh, so make cut, right? I see what you're saying. Yeah. So in your file, you probably Be have. Yeah. One second. One second. One second. Sir. One second. Sir. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I gotta change. I'll change that in my template to make that work. Yeah, um, Blaine, you can correct me if I'm wrong too, but I think as long as they're directionally proportionate or directionally accurate, it it shouldn't make a difference. But I might be wrong there. Okay. On um, which which one? So like, if um, make cut for everybody's one percent, does that treat them all the same as if they were one hundred or? Uh no, so th that you want to import as whole numbers, and the reason why is because the way our PGA sims work for classic. Uh, for cut events specifically, is I've taken five years worth of golf events and taken everybody's make cut and win pre-tournament probabilities from the betting odds and then built a Gaussian mixture model. So it's basically like if you make the cut, you have one Gaussian distribution. If you miss the cut, you have a different Gaussian distribution or a normal distribution. Uh, and so what we're doing is taking these make cut and win probabilities and clustering players in and basically just like reconstructing their... Uh, expected distributions for this tournament from those odds. So like uh, standard deviation isn't even used in classic. We only look at uh, make cut probability and win probability plus your projection. All right. So this is what I just did. Um, I want to re-upload this. I just changed the... Um... Yeah. If you want to re-upload, there's actually a button on that page. Oh, there's uh, a faster way. Data. Yeah. So you can straight from that page, you can click the uh, import data button and it'll allow you to re-upload another set of files. Let me see. Uh, that's too late. 
Okay, so let's do it one more time. And then, so I just, I changed the, the, the file and I, I gave CT pan is, uh, and I gave everybody a hundred. Let's see how it looks. Yes. Yeah, so now I got everybody at a hundred percent and I got CT pan in there. So now we're ready to go. Okay. You'll probably want to change. Right? Yeah. You'll probably want to change the wind probabilities as well. Oh, same can... thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could do that. Let's, you know. Just uh, multiply that out. Hold on. Oh, yeah. so those are a hundred off, right? Yeah. Yeah, on the site in general, it's uh every all percentages are whole numbers, the way we parse yeah. them out. Like okay. instead of ownership being 0 0.09 for nine percent, it's just nine. Yeah. Let's see. Uh or is ownership good or no? No, you're good. I was just Okay. Yeah. the same percentage concept okay, so if i want to just change this well okay so we'll re oh we'll do it from here okay yep okay, so I change that um, this this and let's see what it looks like now same thing fix issue use projection value import player data and now it looks like we got that one. looks correct yeah okay good so now there's nothing else to do here we'll hit next now this is actually interesting. I didn't even know this was a thing until you uh, you told me this online. Um, so with lineups, I presume that what this is is let's say you build, you know, your lineups uh, already, like you built them elsewhere, like either on SaberSim or Fantasy Crunch or whatever. I guess this is something where you can actually upload those lineups to here and just have it sim those lineups for you. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. We also have, so on our optimizer, if you build a set of lineups in the optimizer, and I do this a lot for small entry contests when I want to be really specific about what lineups are being played, you can build lineups in our optimizer or any other optimizer, and you can import them directly into this step. It'll allow you to test those in the sim against uh, the field you generate, or like for the smaller field stuff, like maybe it's a thousand entry, you can just build a thousand optimizer lineups and run those in the sim. Well, let me ask you, can, will this take him straight for DraftKings or I have to keep the, I have to get the file? Um, no, you, so there's, there's you might have to need. Yeah, you might have to match the column header positions. Well, I have, I, have, I have a set of DraftKings lineups. Um, is that Yeah, a, if you download, um, click on download template and you'll see the headers. Oh, so it's not, it won't take it straight from the, um, like if I already have them made and on DraftKings, it's not going to. Not yeah, because we rely on column positioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it would have to look like that. Okay. Yeah. I, I use it a lot with yeah. our optimizer because it's like just literally like a one-click thing. It gives you a list of all the optimizer jobs you ran from the same slate and allows you to import them. Well, let me just just for just for fun, let me see if I can find the golf. I did this a while ago. Uh PGA lineups, projections. Right, we'll we'll do that. All right, so we, we'll we'll skip that one. So sim options is not is not clicked here. So that's the next thing, right? So we'll go Perfect. next. Now sim options. I'll have to tell you guys, I've never touched this screen. Um, so I guess these are just kind of the default options that that you guys recommend for you know to use, right? So projection minimum randomness minimum salary, maximum percentage off optimal default variable. That's just what you guys just kind of think is the best way to start. And I mean, how do I guess, I guess my question is, I mean, is there, are there like best practices out there? You know, in other words, like do people like, like talk about like how to, how to, how to screw around with this stuff? Cause I, in the absence of knowing how to screw around with something, I just don't screw around with this. Um, am I right that these are kind of like default what you guys think is the best, whatever that means? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, but you might want to change it. Like this is a large field. So these defaults are probably fine. Okay. Uh, but for example, a smaller entry contest, people might be playing more optimal lineups. And so you'd want to reduce that maximum percentage of optimal. Yep. You've got to kind of use your own heuristics. Okay. All right. So then I would, I would just go next and right through. And then there's, there's now here's what's interesting is that like, for me, it says waiting for job to begin. I, until I learned how to do this, I just sat here. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Right, it says waiting for job to begin, right? So mm -hmm. I would go and I'm like, and I, I there were so many times I, I would ping you guys, I'm like it's not working, 
It's not working, waiting for job to begin, but you do actually have to click this thing. Okay, it says run simulation. All right, so now what it's doing, uh, presumably, is it's it's run, it's building a, a field of lineups based on the information that I kind of gave it. And, and then after it does that, it's going to run, you know, uh, it's going to rank, I guess, everything based on different different metrics. So yeah. um, this usually takes, I mean, depending on its mood, I guess, not that long, a couple of minutes maybe, but this one actually is not that bad. So you'll notice it says 37,647 field, li field line of section. 37,224 uniques, I presume, that there are 37,647 entries in this tournament. That's where this is coming from. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. And and just so you guys know, the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why I like to use you guys, um, and it, see, it would seem as though other SIM products would do this a little easier, but I, I, I want to use my ownership projections. In other words, I put a lot of work into it. I want to use my projections, my ownership projections, and I just want to plug those things in and, and use those to generate my fields and not to call out other companies, but you're the only one that does it for me. You know, like it, it's, it's so hard. I mean, like I use, and I, listen, I've yelled at him about this, like Sabersim, like you can't even do that. You have to like either pick one of their stock fields or you could screw around. Like you could, you could, you know, build 5,000 lineups and then sim it against yourself sort of. But I I, I kind of like the simplicity of this, you know, like you just put you put your ownership in and it's kind of like kind of doing its thing. And then you kind of I don't know, then you just then then it kind of works that way. So that's that's why I, I like to use you guys for especially golf and golf showdown, because that's really all I I would say all I need you for. But I mean, I have my projections. I have my ownership projections. I just need I just need your algorithm. You know, <laughs> I just I need your programming to to. To kind of to kind of figure this stuff out, but what's yeah, so like our philosophy in general is sort of give the user as much control as they can handle. Whereas you know, like Saberson, like you said, they have the pre-built fill pre-built fields that you kind of have to align to, and you can't really change stuff. The reason this takes a couple minutes, as opposed to like you click Saberson and you get Linos back, is we are generating the entire contest field every time you run a simulation based on your data, your sim options, everything you put into it. So no two runs are the same. It depends on the data you put in. It depends on that page you see with the minimum salary, percent off optimal. We are building your field every time you run a sim. And I, I actually don't think this is particularly long. Um, it, it's pretty quick for generating, you know, 40,000 lineups and running 50,000 contest simulations. We've done, Blaine's done a really full, a pretty, pretty good job at getting this thing as fast as we can get it. Yeah, so we're gonna just so you guys know what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do baseball because I, I have other I have other questions about baseball. Yeah, uh, and like you said, as a first time user, it it is kind of abrasive to get on the site and try to get through things. We've got a lot of uh, cool stuff going on in the background that should be out for NFL season. That's gonna make the whole process like ten times easier to do. Nice. Um. All right. So here here is where the results of the of just the lineup builds are kind of put together, right? So it's it rates the top 150 here. And then also you could look at like, I think at a whole bunch, right? So here's the top 150. But before we can get into it, you have this kind of tab here that has player data summary. And this will kind of um uh this will kind of like kind of rank them in, in, in a lot of different ways, like field ownership, uh projected ownership, whatever. And and obviously the field, well. Projected ownership. Tell me again why my projected ownership is not going to necessarily match the field ownership. Yeah, there's just random chance in the way that lineups are generated. So oh. we use your projected ownership like a probability. That's the probability that Scotty Sheffer will be in any random lineup is 22.14%. And then sometimes just with randomness, he'll be a little off of that. In this case, he was like right on, which is good. But you'll yeah. see that for the, especially for higher entry contests, the probability should match. And if they don't, and yeah. something's off either with our on our side or in your input data. So now you get, you know, and you can list the top 150. Now, one one thing again that 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 you can't do, right? Let's just call it what it is, is it's it's um 
you can't um uh, do stuff like like min uniques two min uniques three um you can't really i mean there there's who who i forget which one of you gave me kind of a workaround with that um but it's just basically rating the top 150 right uh, uh excuse me the top 150 like for example let's let's take a look at this let's um let's download these oh not this not the summary let's go to the lineups okay we'll go to the lineups We'll yeah. to, I mean, I mean, at the moment, you can't you can't edit any player exposures or do unique combos um, yeah. on the Sims, but that's part of the rework we're doing for NFL season. Is once you build your lineups, you'll be able to set player exposures from a Sim or set a uh, number of uniques per lineup from the Sim. Because obviously, that's a, that's a big pain point, and it helps you build better lineups if you can control exposures directly or set the minimum minimum number of uniques between lineups. So this yeah. is the and you aren't. You aren't stuck downloading just the top 150 lineups. You can download all 37,000. Right. That's that right. Generated. That's what I was mentioning before. So so here you can rate these however you want, you know, and and like you said, the user, you know, can can kind of choose this. And now you can just any if you could you you could screw around with the spreadsheet, you know, you could you could filter these however you want. I mean, it doesn't do it for you, but this is this is this is trivial. You know, if you want to, you know, you want to screw around with this, you can. But this isn't the top 150. And like you said, you hit download all lineups over here. And then if you wanted to, if you wanted to view them all, you can view them all. Now, in some sports, like this, this dupe, this dupe column becomes somewhat relevant. You know, like if you do like MMA stuff, um, you might be interested in knowing how many, how many dupes are projected. So sometimes, you know, if if you're into this kind of thing, I mean you'll you'll you know, minimize the amount of, uh, maximize the amount of dupes you're, you're willing to do. So you could, you could, you could, um, you could sort your lineups, but you, it, it's, it's gotta be, like you said, it's gotta be done kind of yourself. I mean, you could, you could, how could you, you can't do this like within the site, right? You have to kind of do that off site. Is that right? Yeah. And that's, that's a pain point we're, we're trying to solve, but I, I do it in Python and coding the way I set my player exposures or like in baseball team stack exposures. I do that programmatically. I'm sure like somebody like you can do that in Excel fairly easily. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you, and then you just download them and you, and you, and you, fi and you fire it. Um, now here are some of these things. So when you hit here, here's a couple of interesting things that, that you can do. So if you want to run a new one, okay, like, I would, this is the way, this is where I would go. Like, let's say I want to run a new one. I came back, I would go back to simulator and I would go back to here and I would do this again. And one, and one thing that you can see pretty easily is that it, you can save, like it saves your old uh, number. So if you know, you just want to run another one, let's say I want to run one for like the signature hole or whatever. Um, but I don't want to change the ownership for whatever reason. It's going to save, right? The yep. same, the same data there. Um, yeah. So you, so that, that that's interesting. Yeah. Um, if you're running a different contest, I'd recommend doing that. But if yeah. you wanted to run the same contest and and change some things like ownership or change your sim options like minimum salary and stuff, then I would use the clone job button in that uh, summary preview we were, we were looking at, and that'll do the same thing where it clones the job, makes a new one for that same exact contest. You can go in and edit your your settings. And this here is a, is a job history where it'll just. Uh, yeah. So if you click that second one there, that's the one you ran. And so you could, you could pull that up again if you wanted to. Yeah. You can pull that up and then there's a clone job button you would click and it would go through and, and remake the job for you without having to go through all the extra clicks. So clone this job. So that means it, 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 let's see this clone simulation job. Yep. And if I just want to make a couple of changes here. Yeah, exactly. You would make your changes, go through again and hit run simulation, and it would run a new simulation with your changes. I mean, if you feel like it, if you feel like Xing guys out, I guess you could do it from this. I mean, I don't, but if you felt like it, I guess you could do it from this screen, right? I mean, yeah. Typically, I don't try to X people out or change too many things for the field, but yeah. if I run like an optimizer job, I might run a new one and import that again, where I will like X out players or set my uniques and do it that way. And if you were going to use, I've, I've literally never used this, but, but, an optimizer, I just presume it's going to be the yep. similar thing, but it's just not going to run a sim, right? Oh, yeah, name this job. Uh, just let's just do this. Well, load, hey, we'll do this the very first time. So, and actually, you could you, you can load your same projections into the optimizer job. 
next. Oh, we could add rules if we feel like it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your number of uniques, number of lineups. Oh, so you could do it from that. Oh, uh, so you could do the number of uniques, but just not within the sim part. Okay. Yeah, not at the moment. So here you right, run optimizer needs you the same sort of building thing. Okay. If you're if you're generating a field, you can't really just specify for the entire field three uniques between each lineup, you know? So right. it's just right. But but one thing that um I forget which one of you mentioned this is if you wanted to build like you know, 20,000 lineups or something elsewhere with those types of, with those rules somehow. And then you could use the lineup uh, importer uh, within Ace Mine. Yep. And, uh, and, and we make it pretty easy here. So if you see on the right, you can, you get your download all lineups option, but then you see the create optimized sim. Uh, okay. And what that does is it'll take you to the same sim page where you select your contest. And then on page two or three, where it shows the import lineups, page it'll just automatically pull those lineups into the field um what, save projections again same thing yep oh oh look at that and then if you go next you'll see it's uh we detected you wanted to import your optimizer lineup so it's now bringing those 150 into the field and it will use those and then when it runs and gives you your output you can see which lineups where your generated optimizer lineups and which ones were the field lineups. You can kind of compare them to see how you're doing against the field. So we got to just run it like this, you mean? Sure, yeah. And this is typically what I do for the for smaller field stuff or like the $200 single entry that's like, you know, 1,100, 1,500 entries or whatever. I'll build that many lineups in the optimizer using rules, using what I want to see, what I expect the field to look like. And then I'll run sims from there and pick out my lineup. Yeah, it, right. it's Any, not... anytime. Anytime you have your own personal heuristics for lineup building, like in MLB, you only want five two stacks. An easy way to do that is just use the optimizer, create all your five two stacks, import them into a sim, run a sim, grab the top lineups from that stack you made, and then use those. And then you know every lineup you made is a five two. Can you do other things while this is running, or no? Yep. Yep. This is all. You can run multiple background. jobs. Yep, and you can do all things right. simultaneously. So you could start up another job if you want. So let's do MLB. All right. So let's use, which one do I have? Uh, I think I have the file for the main slate. So let's do relay throw. And here's one little thing that, that, okay. So you have to, you have to, and this is one thing I have to, I have to do with my, my MLB is, is templated. Uh, it says, I'll show you. It's it's so st I would say so stupid. It's such a weird. Yeah. So my, mine actually this. said team name, but I changed it just for you guys. So, oh, that's great. Which, so I changed it for team. Okay. Um. So we'll upload this, and here's going to be the one thing that kind of gets me a little bit. Yeah. So the reason we require that team column now is there's a lot of issues with uh, player names either. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you've ran into it thousands of times. It just helps us determine which player you're talking about specifically, if the names don't match up or there's accents or they use a different name than their actual name. All right. So no batting order column detected. Right. So I don't have a batting order um, in, in my, in my template. So I'll just ignore it. Right. Um, yep. And then what, what happens is, is then it really scares you here. So it pulls all this stuff up and I, I probably have to, Oh, this is good. The ownership is the right decimal. And then. So we, we actually do pull batting orders, but sometimes they're, they're not up to date or not confirmed lineups, or you might have a different opinion on what the batting order is. So we allow you to specify that. Well, let's, let's, let's fi figure out where that is in a minute. So, so same here, same thing as before. It says uh, if you wanted to put your own lineups in, you can do that. And then here are SIM options. Again, I wouldn't mess with this literally at all unless somebody told me to. Um, now, what is so 70, now percent of field using stack? That's not, uh, that's using any type of stacks? Yes. So minimum four on DraftKings, minimum three on FanDuel. Okay. Percentage of, and, and are these defaults, again, like what you guys think is accurate? You know what I mean? Or you just, or you just leave something in there pe for people to mess with? No, they're based off of um, relay throw. So the DK flagship data from last year. Great. 
uh, minimum, maximum percentage. Again, I, I'm, I, 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 tr I trust my providers as, as far as the, the tools go to give me good default to start with. But then we go next. Then we hit run simulation again. And now I get this error that, not error, that just really just kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, let's just see. Yeah. And one thing to note about those presets too, if, if you are the person that wants to change them, you can save those presets and use them in future jobs. So we're getting these, these, these warnings here and I get them all the time. And, and, and I guess what this means, and it's going to build these things anyway, eventually, I think, but, um, does that mean that I may have only I may only have seven Padre guys projected, um, or you don't have uh, what you might call it uh, batting order spots for guys I do have projected? Where do I see that data? You know, where do I see what the batting order projected is and how to change that? On the um, projections template screen, when you import your projections in, you can you should. I mean, it's it's not the most intuitive filtering, but you should be able to see there right, who's well, missing. Exactly. Yeah, it'll show you there. There'll be a column for batting order, and you can see which players have batting order projected and which ones don't. So okay. so allow so you to a player data summary. I would go to. And you, you want to do this on the the first page of the simulator. So when you import your projections, it'll be on that page. So is there an easier way aside from hitting the left arrow to get back to there, or no? I would do clone, clone this clone job. the job. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so we'll clone the job here. And then where is the, oh, batting order right over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've got starting pitchers and you've got your one, two, four, three, all that. Oh, so what I probably want to do then is. Yeah. So like Renhifo there is not starting in our, and for our projections. So I, would, for our I, would sort by, I would probably sort by, by, by NS. Uh, and you can also, um, on the right there, it says copy CSV. You can dump this into an Excel. It should be a little easier for you to filter out. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm guessing uh, the reason that we are detecting so many missing things are just unconfirmed lineups. Um, no, it also could be, it could be that I don't have like, all these guys projected anyway. I mean, it's possible. Anyway. Sure. Um, okay. So then let's go back to... The job history, right? Because that simulator already ran. I don't have to go back. I go back to job history. Right. right? So let's see. Um, so you want to go to the second one that's complete. One that's yeah. complete. And uh, and now can you let's take a look at the player data summary. Now there's no way. Is there any of tell? Is there any way of telling from these lineups like how many stacks of each team I have or anything? Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. So stacks on the right. Yep, that tells you for that lineup what the stack is. So that's a that top one's a five man giant with two Rockies. Right, but it's not telling me of the one fifty lineups like how many are like you know San Francisco stacks, right? Yep. So that's yeah. that's something we're working on okay, in the background now that we'll have out for NFL season is is a lot more control over stack exposure and how they're represented in your in your lineup set. That 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 yep. that's that that's terrific. Um. Tell me about, uh, do you have, and again, the fact that I don't know this is, do you have late swap in here? Or uh, NBA, only for yeah. NBA right now. Just yeah. NBA. Yep. So the, okay. the actually gonna, the sim gonna, process for late swap. Gonna test it. I was going to test it for MLB. Okay. So oh, yeah. for NBA right now. Okay. I mean, Blaine, if you want to talk about the process we use for NBA late swap, it's actually yeah. pretty cool and novel. I think, because I don't think any other site is doing this. Go for it. For DraftKings for late swap, we're taking we make you upload your actual contest file, uh, and the reason why is we are trying to figure out on the fly everybody's lineups, like who's who's left to play. Yep. And so we're just making best guesses about everybody's lineups, and then we can give you a live ROI essentially of your lineups, and then we build uh, five different potential swaps you can make, and then report back on like here's uh, here's all five potential swaps. Here's the actual ROI expect or the expected ROI for all five of these swaps. And you can kind of choose between for each one of your entries, you can choose which swap you want to make based on your ROI or your new projection or whatever. What's um so you're still you're not 
interacting with DraftKings yet, right? In other words, like we, we're not, there's not an entry editor or anything like that. Okay, no, that, 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 that's cool. Yeah. Um, that's also coming soon, very soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, I like that idea, what, what you're doing with the with the basketball stuff. And 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 it, it leads me to this question. I still, I still, I, one of the benefits of talking to all you sharp, you know, data scientists, software types is I, I get to share my, my ideas of things that I don't know how to do and that I wish somebody would do. You mentioned, uh, you know, uh, calculate live ROI of, of, of active lineups. Uh, I, I find it interesting that in poker, you can assign a value to a stack based on ICM modeling, based on, you know, relative stacks and payouts. But in, in, in DFS lineups, you know, the DraftKings model of just saying uh, dollars winning is obviously ridiculous, right? But 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 there's got to be a way, like an easier way, to calculate the expected value of a lineup mid slate. Okay, um, given and I'll I'll put in my projections. I'll put in whatever, because it's 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 first of all it's, first of all it's nice to know you know like, like like what's actually alive and how much you really can and i listen i played around with the live sims on saber sim or whatever it is and that's i guess i guess not the worst but it would be cool just even like an interface for the for the user to say wow this thing is this thing's worth 1200 or something but it also allows you to do a little better job with your late swapping knowing you know how how much you stand to win and 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 god forbid i, don't, I was going to ask you guys if you if you um if you do any sports betting but if 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 you, you if you want to use the sports betting market to hedge against some of your you know your your big upside uh, DraftKings lineups, it would be kind of cool to know what that they're actually worth. And and there are listen and and that 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 is the that is kind of like my my utopia is for someone to put both the sports betting and the 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 DFS together so that like if I'm let's take the easy example like. Uh, I, I, I'm in first place in the MMA in an MMA GPP, and if 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 the main event uh, favorite wins, I mean I I'm gonna win two hundred thousand or whatever I'm gonna win, and I would love to I would like to know that, and then I would know exactly you know how much if I felt like it to to put on the underdog and and, and something. But there are other things you could do like that, like like tennis, where you know if I know that X Y Z if they win by in straight sets, I'm gonna win you know I stand with five thousand. I don't even need to bet the other side. I'll even bet the other side in the first set, you know, because unless I win straight sets, it's not going to get me there. So it would be kind of cool to be able to put those, those disciplines together. If you could, if you could figure out how much these lineups are actually worth. Yes. It a hundred percent is a very, it, first of all, it's entertaining. It's useful, right. To see, Ooh, I'm in first place, but my actual ROI is zero on this thing, you know? Um, and also it allows you to be a better, a better late swapper, and and also, if you want to use the um, the sports betting markets in an intelligent way, I think I think that's that's worth it. So if you if you you're already working on like trying to figure out, you know, ROIs of lineups, just put you can try to maybe put a dollar on it and and make it. Uh, I don't know. My uh... yeah, we actually played around with this uh, last NFL season during showdowns or big showdowns. Um, we would have a leaderboard, live leaderboard of win equity, you know, expected ROI. Yeah, because if you take the MMA example, a lot of first fight stackers will be in first after the first fight. And you're like, well, I mean, that's that's a zero ROI lineup. It's not going anywhere, right. but they're in first at the moment. You know, right? It's, it's a zero one equity one equity lineup. So tell me, um, so you don't have any, you don't do day to day content, right? Uh, you but you do have you do have a Discord, which is uh, so let's listen. There's a lot of competition for. Discord eyes too, but but there there you get you get action from time to time in there. Um, do you do any uh YouTube videos with like you know FAQs and best practices and things like that? If if not, you probably should. Yeah, we have some. They're outdated at the moment, and I plan on updating them when we get our our whole site revamp out. But on our uh, just our Ace Mind site, not the app site, um, we do have videos on some of the pages of me running through the optimizer, me running through the sim. And sort of explaining how to set different rules or what the different options do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like you said, we don't do day to day content. We don't do like a daily MLB show or anything like that. But that's probably something we'll probably want to get into for uh, the NFL season. You, pro you probably don't. I mean, if you want to know the truth, uh, I, I I would I I would say that your 
you know, listen, only so many hours in the day and so many days in the week or whatever, you're, you're, you're going to be just fighting for too many eyeballs anyway. And you, and, and okay. it's not really, you're not really differentiating yourself this year that way, but what you could do is, is have somebody literally just show their show ace mind as you build lineups, you know, to show actually how to use the freaking thing, you know, uh, and, and apply it to an actual slate. And that's kind of like my kind of pet peeve. There are people that do that, that do like evergreen stuff where you show how to use the material. And there are also people that go slate by slate and say who they like, but not that many people actually apply the thing to the slate. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it's kind of combined like day-to-day -day stuff with, with kind of evergreen stuff. Um, yeah. But I, um, I think that you got. Listen, I I I, I root for you guys. <laughs> I, I I like I like your story. I like where you came from. And obviously, you guys are really really sh really sharp guys. And and you're you're involving yourself in in a, in a battle, which is which is kind of fun, you know. And, and it's 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 weird. Like by, about a year ago, someone reached out to me and said, "Oh, with all these Sims coming out, you know, like is it gonna kill the industry?" And this 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 this. I'm like, don't 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 worry about any of that, you know. And I and I and I. I mentioned this. I spoke to Andy from Sabershot about this. Like yeah, after after one of their most recent like incredible updates, I'm like, listen, don't. Here's the way technology works. Back in when when poker was big, back 2005 2006, I created some what like one of the first um what was I going to call it uh solvers. Okay, this is before solvers even existed. Okay, and I literally created like all of the uh like the algebra like on my my kids coloring book like on the way to florida right and nobody had any of this stuff and and like this stuff i don't even know if you if you ever played poker but like these types of things like didn't even exist and this was created in like 2006 right and you you go like 20 years later 15 years later like 70 percent of this stuff is now trivial 30 percent was kind of probably proved as false you know whatever it is but this is back then this was this was like huge like like everybody wanted to get 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 to get this kind of stuff so i i think about this in terms of the sims i say andy i want i promise you this two years from now you're gonna look at what you have now and you're gonna say oh my god that was freaking terrible okay that's just the way to, you know that's the way technology works right so instead yeah. everybody worried that it's the death of the industry just accept the fact that it kind of is terrible right now we, we we don't know why it's terrible we won't for like another year or two, you know, for a lot of you, you guys testing and back testing or whatever it is. But, you know, listen, I've done enough Sims with Saber Sim with you guys and see some of the lineup constructions I come up with that I know that things are not exactly, you know, to tweak, tweak perfectly, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it still comes down to the fact like optimizers didn't solve DFS. You know, people, you can, you can make optimized lineups and it doesn't, you're not winning every time. It, the Sims are the same way. We're like, you have to know what data to put into it. It's entirely relying on the data you put into it. And it's also relying on the settings and the configurations you set. And even then, the lineups you get out, you have to know that, like, this lineup is is probably a good one. This one probably isn't. It just won because of certain circumstances in the field. Well, that's an interesting, ph ph uh, we, we can talk about this forever, but that's an interesting philosophical dilemma that I, I talk about in my videos a lot is if you're, so, you're going to use something like your stuff or SaberSim or whatever, are you... Are you using it to get to lineups that you kind of want anyway? Or, you know what I mean? Or are you using it and then like just accepting what it gives you? So it's kind of like the Rolling Stones thing. You know, you, are you trying to get what you want or are you trying to get what you need? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. So so it's, uh, and it's interesting. I, 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 I'm I the type that if I like ran Saberson, trust their algorithm, run your guys, run the algorithm, and I get like something that didn't make any sense to me, I'm more inclined to go with what didn't make sense. You know, I, I'm more inclined to to accept that my biases are, it's more likely that my biases are wrong than the algorithm is wrong, you know? And, and I will say this, and this is, again, for those people that are still kind of old school out there that say, I'm not going to let some computer tell me what to play or I'm not going to let some Sims tell me what to play. All I will say is this, I've had I've had several, several six-figure scores in the last like couple of years or whatever. And I will say that, zero of them were lineups that I would even have dreamed of playing. You know, like I look at what I, I won with, I'm like, really? And it would have been like the 10,000th lineup that I would have possibly come up with. And, and so again, the human brains, a, a, a funny thing sometimes, you know, and I'm like, 
I know I'm supposed to, and I can't tell you how many times I would I would run Sims. I'm like, okay, I know I'm sp they want me to play like 25%, you know, stacks against Chris Sale, but I don't want to do that, you know? And then next thing you know, you, uh, you X stuff out, you screw around, and then it's five nothing the other team, you know, what am I doing? It's baseball, man. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of a lot of things can happen. So uh, I yeah. uh that actually I, happened to me at the at the open with uh, Xander Shoffley. I plugged everything in. It was giving me like 80% Xander Shoffley. I'm like, I just don't want to play Xander. Right. I can't play Xander. And then, you know, he ends up playing the best golf of his life. Yep. So many. I listen, uh, that's 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 the deal. I mean, like you're always you're always battling your biases with 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 the math, you know, and, and uh, I don't know. Usually, usually the math wins as far as I'm concerned. But again, again, the math is new. Right. So it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's certainly like you have to at least look at the output of the lineups and and just cross check them with your own brain sometimes because sometimes you will get lineups that don't make sense and they might not be great. But you know, I, I tend to I'm trying to learn how to trust uh, the data and and the sims, but sometimes you, it's hard to do that with like your biases. I, you will, you know, and I'll tell you, like in MMA now, like like with the, the constant battle for 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 uniqueness. You know, and, and MMA with 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 lineups that might actually have a chance. Um, I'm at a point now where I have like different processes to like to rank rate lineups by different ownership things or whatever. I don't even look anymore at who I have. I mean, like I I I, I trust my process, pile it in, and I don't look until the first fight goes off. Um, and <laughs> maybe that's like like I said, don't try this at home. But uh, hey, if you really have faith in your process, why should you care who you end up playing? You know, I don't right. know. Um, all right. Anything else you guys uh, want to talk about before I let you go, or you think we covered most of it? No, I just um, want to... go ahead. really quickly. We're not doing um, daily content for MLB, but I am giving away my projections in our Discord for everybody. Oh, so they're like pr fully formatted and with my personal projections. We've had actually uh, not to toot my own horn, but we've had a lot of success with them for the amount of users that we have relative to the uh, our competitors. Uh, we've had a lot of success on FanDuel, especially for me. Um, so, but yeah, if you want free projections for baseball, I'll tell you, you know, one of join the, the discord, one of the things yeah, that yeah, I, one of the, I, I'll, I'll start to, and you do ownership projections too. Yep. So one of the things I'll do, um, I'll, I, I, I track more sites <laughs> like ownership projections and results. And I, I'm not, I don't care too much about the point projections because that, what, what are you going to do? I mean, you, you're putting a median out there. How do you even, how do you even. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> How do you even gauge it? You know what I mean. Um, but but the ownership it is what it is. I mean, you project something and you're off. You know that that's 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 pretty pure. Um, and uh, uh, I'll share these findings with you. Like golf is pretty tight. You know, the, the, the industry in general does a pretty good. Not only not only are they close pre pre flop, but but they're actually close to 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 actual. Um, and I did, a, I did, well, I'm, this, this is going to come as no surprise to a data guy, but, but I once was like tracking like 15 different sites or whatever. And I, I rated them by like average daily difference or something like that. And the, 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 the best performer as is to be expected was the average of them all. I mean, that was, that was, that was, that was always on the crowd, right? Long, large numbers is rough like that, you know? Um, and, uh, the other, the other thing I will say about football uh, which I tried traded last year is that there was a wild, wild overshoot of like the chalkiest player. Like when when they when they got a, a chalky running back, I don't know. I, you would have thought the Sims would have would taper it a little bit, but it just didn't work out that way. Like this, the 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 chalkiest projected guy was was like 10, 15 percent higher, and it didn't, and it was across the board. Like all the different providers, like no one even tried to get ahead of the curve as that. And the yeah. final one is that is that sports like tennis, if anybody ever really wants to do ownership projections in tennis, I mean, right now what's out there are literally almost random number generators. Like I just, it's <laughs> literally you, your best ownership projection really is going to be when you build like a bunch of optimized lineups and, 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 and rate them, like how much you get, you have them. Um, yep. But I'll, I'll be curious to see, I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to start downloading your, your, your stuff from there. Um, and my advice to you guys is again, you know, just be a little better with your with your social media presence, and you know, a little better with your YouTube stuff, you know, or whatever. Um, but 
I, I'll root, I'll root hard for you guys, and uh, look forward to see the uh, the different uh, improvements you made uh, during football season. Yeah, we should definitely probably have another call uh, when those improvements are out because it's going to be a complete redesign. It's going to be so much better. Absolutely, I could be your yeah. you know your 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 beta tester or whatever they call them. Yeah, we'd love that. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, uh, good luck, and I'll talk to you guys later. All righty, see you. All right, thank you. See you.